This is the apartment where I grew up. And this is my hometown. A pretty and remarkable place. But it's got one superpower for photographers. Fog. It's cold, very cold this morning. Negative five degrees Celsius, I believe, but totally worth it because we have a beautiful and lovely day for photography. So I thought that today's video could be, should be, all about fog, how to use it, what it does to our images, but all about camera gear, the settings, how to edit, how to predict foggy conditions, where to find them, and a few words about safety. There are many reasons why I love shooting in the fog, but I think that the main one has to be the theft that it adds to your images by creating layers. The fog makes the objects that are closer to you look darker than the objects that are farther away from you, and that is what creates the layers in our images. So we can do things that we usually couldn't get away with, at least in black and white, like overlapping the branches of this tree with the tower that is in the background. It is the fog that is making that tower ever so slightly lighter that makes this image work. Sometimes the effects of the fog can be very subtle, like in this case. I love this post, I photographed this location many, many times. Now, this is an image that, in my opinion, works even without the fog, but the fog is adding that extra clarity, I guess, because the subject is the closest thing to us, it's very dark and very clear. Then we have a second line, a second fence, that is less clear because it's starting to get affected by the fog. And then we have the background farther away, which is barely visible because of the fog. So we have those three layers and the fog is helping to enhance an image that was already there, but it's making it better. And it's adding some atmosphere, some mood, some mystery to it as well. But other times the fog can be so intense, so dense, that we'll find images in places where there would be none otherwise. So locations that we never even consider to shoot at, all of a sudden become the best locations ever. And that is nowhere that I know of more true than here in my hometown. A rather unremarkable place, some would say, including me, even ugly, but it has one good thing going for it, and it's the very intense fog that happens quite often. So what otherwise would be a very messy and chaotic place becomes the perfect playground for me. The town is full of interesting subjects, but they are usually, for the most part, in very busy and chaotic environments. What the fog does is uh, it clears, it simplifies those environments, so the subject that we are capturing can stand out, and it's not just a part of a whole mess where the viewer doesn't even know what they are looking at. That is why, of course, fog is a great fit for minimalism, for a more minimalistic approach to photography where we give the subject more importance and we simplify everything else to the point where there's almost nothing else. I don't like to go that far though, I still like to show some context. Oh, it's very wet. Here one of my favorite trees, one that you might already know, and it's a, it's a place that I like to visit, especially uh, on foggy mornings, because as you can see the background is pretty much gone, but still you can uh, see some trees in the background. It's looking just beautiful this morning on this frosty white ground, isn't it? My feet are getting very wet though. Foggy conditions are amazing for photography anywhere, 
anytime. They work great with nature and subjects like trees, as we just saw, but I personally love photographing more urban environments, environments with more man-made structures on foggy days, in very foggy conditions like we have today. I'm gonna make a photo here because this is looking awesome and it's something that only works on a day like today because the background here is very busy there are other houses in the background other trees that distract that don't let this tree here stand out by itself I'm trying to do a three-layer kind of thing, I guess, here with the bush in the foreground, the, the light in the middle ground, the building and the tree in the foreground. Just need to find the right way to place them in the frame. And maybe this is not the right bush. Yeah, I think this one is gonna work much better. Again, it's not like the fog is strong enough today to hide that building or other stuff in this environment. It's just that it's uh, emphasizing the, the, those layers that already happen here naturally between the elements in the foreground, middle ground and the background. And it's helping us to make this image work just slightly better. Because I like to create layers in my images, I usually avoid scenes like this one where we only have one, the building in the background, and it's not very clear because of the fog. Now, this could still be pretty good if we want to be more suggestive and more subtle, and I still make images like this one every once in a while. But in this case, instead of shooting the more obvious, I'd rather turn around and shoot this. And that is this street light with that unfinished building, which, by the way, has been unfinished since I remember for years, for decades now. I really love to contrast elements in the frame like this. I think this one makes you think a little bit more. It makes you wonder what's about that building that is not finished. Is it abandoned? Is it in ruins? What are we doing here? What are we looking at? And I think it creates more mystery that way. If you like what you see here and want more, please consider joining my Patreon page where I go into more detail about my process and workflow. And it's also the best way to support my work. You can find the link in the description down below. I hope that by now you agree with me on how great shooting, taking photos in foggy conditions is, and I hope that you'll give it a try if you haven't yet. You might be thinking all of this is great, but when and where? can I find fog? And that is the tricky part because unfortunately some places just will never get fog or it will be very rare. Trying to predict the fog is also tricky business. I think I'm pretty good at knowing when fog is gonna happen here in my hometown because I've spent a lot of time here and I'm more familiar with the conditions that are required necessary for the fog to happen. What I look usually look for is some rain, some humidity on the ground followed by a cold night a cold morning, usually clear and no wind. And still, sometimes it just doesn't happen. There are some apps that I use every once in a while, especially when I'm in a place I'm not familiar with. I have a whole video where I talk in more detail about this. I'm gonna link it there if you are interested. If uh, the place where you live doesn't get any fog at all, or you struggle finding it on your travels, don't despair just yet, because there's another way, something I love doing. It all comes down to what fog actually is. It's just like being inside a cloud. This is what it feels like when you're flying on a plane and you look out the window, right? So if the fog doesn't come down to you, you can always go up to the fog or the clouds. That's why I love going to the mountains when it's raining, because while down here we get regular rain, up there the situation can be very different if the mountains are high enough or the clouds low enough or both. Now, granted, it's not the same, it's not the same kind of fog. I prefer this one that we have today because it's not raining, it's not windy. Usually when you go to the mountains and it's raining, well, it's kind of like storms, so the conditions are gonna be more challenging, potentially more rewarding too, but it's another way to get foggy weather. In foggy conditions, I shoot almost exclusively with these two zoom lenses, the 28 to 200 and the 17 to 
28. That is because, as I said, the fog is helping us a lot, creating separation between the subject and the background, creating those beautiful layers. So we don't need shallow uh, depth of field or anything like that. Zoom lenses will do just fine and they will give us the flexibility that the fog many times requires because they are usually very quickly changing conditions. The fog can roll in and out very quickly in just a matter of a few seconds so you want to be flexible with your options and um, being able to go from wide to long is priceless for me. Now being in the fog is basically like being in a cloud. It's very humid and it's very wet and you and your camera gear are gonna get wet so make sure that your camera and your lenses are weatherproof at least to some degree. You can also use lens hoods to protect the front of your lens from getting uh, water drops. I don't use them personally because I don't mind. The one thing though is that you have to be very wary of condensation. I recommend you to use a camera bag where you can keep your camera and lenses once you get back home or once you get back in the car so they can get back up to a room temperature little by little. This is something that I do not follow all the time myself. I, I've paid the price for it. If you shoot with autofocus like I do, you might find yourself struggling to focus scenes like this one that I have right here where everything is far away, almost lost in the fog. Now, I personally prefer to get closer to my subject, so I have one that stands out, that is darker, like we saw earlier, you know, to create layers, but sometimes you want to go more subtle, to be more suggestive and to hint instead of showing and revealing everything in the frame. But it might be too subtle for the camera, for the autofocus system to work properly here. So what I do is I set my camera uh, in a very special focus mode. It's called DMF, and my uh, Sony camera at least. It might be called something completely different in your camera, but basically it's the best of both worlds because you can use it as if it were uh, autofocus, but you can actually use the manual focus ring on your lens to fine-tune that focus in situations where you might struggle, where the camera might struggle a little bit more like this one. It looks almost like a snowy landscape, doesn't it? Even though it hasn't snow here, of course. But talking about the snow, shooting in the fog can be very similar to shooting in the snow, in the sense that the large amounts of whiteness that we have in the frame can trick the camera's uh, meter. So you want to most of the time overexpose your shots. I usually have my camera set to plus 0.3, sometimes even plus 0.7, but depending on the scene I might want to underexpose it. So of course it comes down to your preferences and what you are photographing, but it's always worth keeping an eye on your histogram to make sure that everything looks the way you want it to look. Let's talk editing. The goal when editing a photograph is to follow the idea that we had in the field to accentuate the elements that reinforce that idea and to tone down the ones that go against it. The good thing about the fog is that it does almost everything for us. I barely edit my fog photographs, like this one where the layers were already pretty clear. Sometimes what I do, again, is to guide the viewer to show the actual idea that I want to show them. For example, here I have a linear gradient on the bottom left of the frame, just to make that part of the frame a little bit darker, so when you're looking at the photograph, you go to the part that I want you to go. In this photograph, I used another mask, in this case a radial gradient, to make that tree stand out a little bit more because it was a little bit too far in the fog, but as you can see, it's a very, very slight effect. We gotta be careful because it's pretty easy to overdo it in the editing. We want to make subtle changes to what was already there. This is another example where I tried to make the subject darker. And lastly, in this photograph, instead of making the tree darker to make it stand out even more. What I did instead was to make the background lighter so it doesn't compete as much with the main subject of the photograph. As you can see, the image is much better because that background is slightly 
more out of the way. Another thing I would like you to uh, keep an eye on, to, to pay attention to, is the uh, light. Now, the light is usually very flat on foggy days, as you can see, but when the fog finally starts to uh, fade away, to clear up, sometimes we get a very cool sight of the sun, still partially blocked by the fog. It looks almost like the moon. No, weirder than that, and I've made some images with the sun that way in the frame, and I think they look amazing, and it's something that we can and we should play with as well. Before wrapping this up, allow me a few words on safety. As you might have noticed, I always wear this yellow coat. If it's not this one, I have another yellow raincoat. But I try to wear bright clothes as often as possible because I want to make myself visible, especially in foggy conditions where visibility is very reduced, especially when we are hanging out next to roads or in places where hunters are around, like here. Be careful with the fog also when you venture into nature, into the wilderness, because the way back to the car, the way back home, might look very different with and without the fog. If you get caught in fog, you might not even be able to find the way back. I almost forgot, but one very important word about drones. Flying a drone in foggy conditions can give you very dramatic results. I love the footage and the images, and I do it all the time. But you gotta be very careful. You can't forget that fog is water, and the drone is gonna get wet. Most of the time, that's not a huge deal, but if you are dealing with freezing temperatures or even close to freezing temperatures, you gotta be extremely careful, because this has happened to me a couple of times. Ice can build up on the propellers of the drone and you're gonna lose control of it. Battery level is low. Aircraft will return to the home point in 10 So what I do when it's cold like today, I try to stay above the fog so the drone doesn't make contact with that freezing fog. And I think that's all I had to say about fog photography. I hope I didn't forget anything, but if you have any questions or any comments or suggestions, please leave a comment down below. And as you can see, it's still plenty foggy. It's still plenty cold as well. So I'm going to keep walking around and hopefully make some more images. I love fog. I love shooting in the fog. And I hope that after this video, you might like it as well. And you might know a little bit better how to approach photography in these conditions. That's all I got for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.